Praise the Lord and good evening, God's beautiful, beloved saints of the Most High God. I pray that all is well and you are loving Jesus, the King who lives to give us absolutely everything. I'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday evening Learning to Live Bible Study. I pray that you have come with the spirit of expectation. You know, our church started a fast on Monday, January the 3rd. Hallelujah. And on this fast, we was asked um, to read certain passages of Bible verses. So on Monday, January the 10th to today, Wednesday, January the 12th, our reading came from Colossians, the fourth chapter, from Thessalonians, the first chapter, and for today, 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Now, I would like to share with you what I believe the Holy Spirit is saying, and it comes out of Colossians, the fourth chapter, and the sixth verse. And this is what our Heavenly Father is saying. As Christians, that's you and I, as Christian, we should let our speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that we may know how we ought to answer every man. Now, beloved, if our speech is not seasoned with grace or seasoned with salt, we lose the effectiveness a regional world with the gospel, one soul at a time, which is our reasonable service. Now, if you're on Facebook and you're hearing me now, I would like for you to go to your comment section and type this in. My speech will always be with grace, seasoned with salt. In Jesus' name, amen. And we can do it because we have the greater one on the inside of us. Go ahead and turn your Bibles to the canopy of our protection, Psalms 91. And if you are there, and if someone is in the room with you, this is our canopy protection. I don't want you to just follow along with me, but I want you to open up your mouth and declare it. Because we have what we say. The canopy of our protection, Psalms 91, and the very next voice you will hear after me will be our beloved pastor, Dr. Willis O. Lewis. The canopy of our protection, Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and butler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noon's day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adam. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He should call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him 
my salvation. Go ahead in your comment section. Send up some hallelujah praise hands because God is our canopy of protection. Do you believe that on tonight? And it's always from me to you. B-B-A-K-O-J. Be blessed and keep loving Jesus. I love you. Amen. Enjoy the word on tonight. Well, good evening, saints of the Most High God. Once again, we just want to say thank you for taking this time, this opportunity to stream in with us during this Learning to Live Bible study, another Wednesday evening where we can come together and learn and grow in the Word of God. I do want to say thank you for all of you uh, that are out there who are streaming in, our CHOP family, our CCI family, those of you who are here in the CSRA, the Central Savannah River area, my Raymond family, you know I love you and appreciate you. Our Covenant Churches, thank you as well. And I just want to say thank you to all of my ESMP family that are also viewing this uh, broadcast at this time. Let's take a uh, moment and go to word of prayer and let's delve right into the word of God. Heavenly Father, just want to take this time to dismiss myself and to invite the Holy Spirit to come in and take full control of my mind my soul, my spirit, my heart, my words, my lip, my mouth. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Now, Heavenly Father, each and every one who listen to this word on tonight, let it just captivate. Let, this, let it just capture them to the point where they want to hear every word that the Holy Spirit is saying unto us on this day. Now, Father, we just want to say thank you. And as we get in your word, help us to move forward because we know it's all about you. We want to say thank you. We praise you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if you will, go ahead and turn your Bibles with me to the book of Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, I want to read verses uh, 13 through 16, and then we might go back later on and to, develop, and, and to develop some of these other scriptures as we go. I will be reading to you from the King James Version, Exodus 14, verse 13 through 16, and it reads, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. That word salvation also means a deliverance. Of the Lord, how God will deliver you and save you. The salvation of the Lord, which He will show you, a uh, show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Wow. God knows how to get, get your enemies out your way. And He knows how to cause them to be behind you. And you don't have to focus on them anymore. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. And that's where we'll be taking our text from. That they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. I want to stay in a teaching mode. And I always say this because that's what I want to do. I just want to teach on tonight. And I'm going to try my best not to get excited. I don't want to, I'm trying not to get in a preaching mode, but I just want to teach on tonight. I want to talk to you about a command to go forward, a command to go forward. And one of the things about going forward is that there is a, and let me put it like this, the caveat to going forward is always looking back. And there is a danger in looking back. I will talk about that in a few minutes. But I want us to look at something here. Let's go back just for a minute in the 
book of Exodus, and let's look at the backdrop to all of this. And we know now, at this point, you know, the Lord has sent ten plagues uh, to the Egyptians. None of these plagues affected God's people. That goes to show you that God knows how to deliver the righteous. He knows how to preserve the righteous and leave the ungodly for destruction. God knows how to separate his people from the world. Uh, let me put it like this. Those who do not trust or believe and do not want to acknowledge him as Lord or God. And when those people or when your enemies even try to chase you, if God is on your side and the scripture said is God before you, who can be against you? And so when we look at this, now the ten plagues have already been completed. Now Moses had told Pharaoh, I'm sorry, Mo, uh, I'm sorry, not so much Moses told Pharaoh, well you know the scripture, he said let my people go. But now the Pharaoh have to let the people go and now he tells uh, Moses, get the people and y'all go. Go and serve your gods, I'm paraphrasing this. So now the children of Israel are doing their exodus out of Egypt and now God led them through the way of the wilderness. He could have led them another way, but he knew that they would have to fight. So he led them by the way of the wilderness to the Red Sea. And so when he led them that way, then all of a sudden it God hardened Pharaoh's heart one more time. Pharaoh say, I am going to go after the children of Israel and I'm going to annihilate them. I'm going to destroy them. And so he got his 600 men, and they began to, uh, uh, to follow and pursue after uh, the children of Israel. And you will find this in Exodus chapter 14. If you look in verse 7, he said, And he took 600 chosen chariots. And I said men, but he said 600 chosen chariots. And the uh, chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And then he said, And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel, and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. I mean, they took the gold, they took the silver, they took everything that they need for the journey, and you know, they didn't leave out broke. They leave out. They left out with spoils. They left out with wealth. They left out on the high hand because God was the one that delivered them. Now, I want you to think about this. Here they are, coming from 400 years of bondage. Now they're being free. And anybody, and they should know that one man in his own fleshly uh, strength could not deliver uh, such a multitude of people. It could have been anywhere between 2 million to 3.5 million people that came out of Egypt. It was not a few hundred thousand. There were millions of people of the children of Israel that came out of uh, Egypt. And this was their exodus. So as they were moving out, then God led them by the way of the wilderness. And look what happened here. And then the Egyptians, they began to pursue after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and the horsemen and his army and overtook them uh, encamped by the sea besides, the, uh, you know, this place, what they call Pa Haratha before uh, ba Bala Z uh, Zephon. Now, when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptian marched after them. And they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Now, I know we read where God told uh, Moses, why are you crying unto me? It was the children of Israel begin to cry unto the Lord. This is what had happened. And God said, why are you crying unto me? Now, watch this. It says, and they said unto Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt. Had thou taken us uh, away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt uh, thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Now listen, Moses, God was using Moses to tell them to go forward, to take them forth out of Egypt, not to leave them in, leave them in Egypt. So they begin to cry. So you mean to tell me you brought us out here, there's, there were not enough graves? You know, you mean to tell us that you brought us out here to die? And notice this, and look, and look in verse uh, 12. 
is not, is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptian. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptian than that we should die in the wilderness. Now, listen to me. These people immediately began to look back when God was trying to bring them forth or try to get them to go forward. When and I see this in the lives of people individually. I see people who had gotten saved. I see people who have to, uh, made a change. And because everything, just I'm talking about just like the next day or the, uh, maybe within that week, things didn't so much change for them automatically and all of a sudden they decide to look back and say, you know what? I might well keep, I should have just keep living the way I've been living because, yeah. see, I got saved, but there was no change. Wow. And I see people say, well, you know what? I, 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 I might well go back selling drugs. Uh, you know, I tried God and seemed like nothing changed and nothing happened. See, God done bought you out, but you decide to turn back and look back. Mm -hmm. And how in the world can you go forward when you were still thinking about the bondage that you were in? You, when God say go forward, you got to go forward. Now listen to this. Watch this. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. And this is what we do as witnesses for Christ. This is what we do when we try to encourage people. Y'all constantly looking back. Y'all constantly bringing up mess. Y'all constantly looking at foolishness. Y'all constantly looking at people's flaws. But God is telling us to go forward. Why are you focusing on uh -huh. what was in Egypt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God had delivered us out of Egypt. And sometimes we fall back into the debt of Egypt. I'm talking about God had delivered your finances and what you do. You go swiping cars and don't have any money management uh, or skills. You begin to spend money here, spend money there, and now you're going all the way back and now you're mm. back in debt again. And because you constantly looking back instead of saying, you know what, God didn't deliver me out of my financial situation. Now, the money that I get, I'm, a, I'm going to manage this money. I'm going to save it. I'm going to put it away. I'm going to uh, I'll have some mutual funds. I'm going to invest. I'm going to do something. Because, see, the Bible said, occupy until I come. Engage in business until I come. When God gave the talents, one, five, one, two, one, one. According to the people's ability, they had to do, they had to go and engage in business according to their ability. Now, I'm not here talking about money, but I just want to show you, use this as an example, how some of us uh, go back to the debt of Egypt instead of, uh, instead of us moving out and going forth. Because God said, go forth. We begin to cry unto the Lord. And what he would do, God would deliver us. And next thing you know, our finances are great. But now we, are, we don't have no bills. We don't have no credit cards. But all of a sudden, here come the eye, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. I got to go and do a swipe now. You got to swipe this card and get this. Swipe that card and get that. You got to go spend your money to do this. Spend, and now what you're doing, you're just digging a deeper grave for yourself. You're talking about were there not enough graves in Egypt? You dig the grave outside of Egypt whenever God doesn't deliver you. And then you want to blame somebody else because why? Things are not working out in your favor. God said, I bought you out. Quit looking back. It's time to move forward. Look at this. In verse, let's go on. Let's read a little bit more in, in verse 13. Uh, in Exodus 14, chapter 14. And Moses said unto the people, Fear you not, and stand still, and see what? The salvation, the deliverance. See, watch your salvation. See the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. People automatically give up because it's not working out for them. And the reason why it's not working out for them, they don't know how to stay in faith. That is one of the biggest things and the key thing to us to move forward. you got to stay in faith. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Now watch this. He said that he will show, for, show you uh, today for the Egyptian whom ye have seen today. Ye shall see them again no more forever. Now 
When we begin to trust God and move forward, everything that was, that's pursuing us, everything that is chasing us, everything that tries to haunt us, everything that tries to overtake us, when you say, I'm going forward and yeah. looking forward and not looking back, on, don't you know you will have a lot of space and distance between the things that are trying to uh, pursue you as long as you stay forward. God will even cause a pillar of fire to separate whatever yeah. it is to try to keep you, that's trying to keep you in bondage. Because why? You got a made up mind to go forward. And this is what this year is all about, going forward. If I keep looking at the year 2020 or the year 2021, and you know what? I use those as a learning tool because I can only think about the time out in, in, in the year 2020, July 13, when I was on my deathbed. But you know what? I look back at that and I say, to God be the glory. He bought me out of my death of Egypt. I was, you know what, I, I, and I give God all the glory and praise because now I'm in the year 2022. Mm -hmm. And it's only by his grace and mercy. But when I had the will to live, I say I will. And every time I said I will go forward, I will live, I will get stronger, I will live a prosperous life, I will be better. Everything behind me, God placed and put distance between us. So what was behind me, even though it was behind me, I wasn't looking at what's behind me. I was reaching forth and looking forth to that which was before me. Now watch this. And he says here in verse uh, 14, the Lord shall fight for you and he shall hold your peace. This is one of the problems when it's time for us to go, po go forward. We constantly begin to cry. We begin to uh, uh, lose hope. We be in despair. And all of a sudden, we try to figure out why is it that there are, there's so much calamity in, in my life and so much uh, 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 co uh, confusion in my life. It's because you don't know how to hold your peace. See, the level of a man's maturity is based upon the level of a man's ability to KYMS, to keep your mouth shut. One of the things that you must learn and understand is that, you know, you got people that's not in a storm. They get ready to go in a storm and you got some in the storm. You got some come out of the storm. One of the things that is always good to do is to hold your peace while you're in the midst of a storm. And that storm doesn't necessarily, necessarily have to be a natural storm or a hurricane. I'm talking about th there's all kind of storm that goes on. Storms on the job. Uh, Sometimes people may find them in the church. But if you find it in the church, uh, that you might have caused the storm. Let me just put it like that. Do you got storms uh, uh, in the home, storms among friends and, and families and foes. But here's the, here's the key thing to that. If I hold my peace, and y'all know how we say it, if I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle, victory shall be mine. And the Bible said, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this. Let's go a little further. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they do what? Go forward. And this, and God has given us a command to go forward. Because the only direction God has is forward. This is what he's telling us. Go forward. Be quiet. Hold your peace. Watch the salvation. See the salvation. Your enemy, whatever it is that's trying to bring you back and put you back in bondage, you're not going to see it again if you go forward. If you got faith in God, if you trust God, just go forward. I never, I ran track when I was in high school, but I never ever seen a runner who kept looking back trying to win the goal or trying to win first place. Or trying to have the best time. Because when a runner start looking back and trying to run, he or she is slowing 
him or herself down. But if you stay looking forward and just keep moving, keep pumping, don't stop until you cross that line, you, will, you might end up winning the first, uh, uh, first prize or first place or the goal. And that's the way. See, the Bible said we just got to run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Let's go a little further. Notice this. Now, now the Lord tells Moses how to do it, what to do. He said, but lift, up, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out uh, thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. He's told them that they were going to go on dry ground, not muddy ground. But that's going to show you the power of God. God took the breath out of his nostrils and separated the, the, the sea, divided the sea, so the people, children of Israel, could grow, go over on dry ground. Now watch this. What became the deliverance for the children of Israel, because this was their salvation, it became the destruction for their enemy. And the only thing you have to do is keep going forward. Because you keep going forward and don't look back. What, what's your deliverance, what, be, what, what God is using for your deliverance, God would turn around and use that same thing for your enemy destruction. That's why he's telling them to go forward. Now, let me, let, let me um, uh, share some other little commentary with you. One of the things that's important for us to do, you must go forward when the Lord uh, tells you to go forward. And a lot of people say, well, how do I know God is telling me to go forward? Well, God never ever tells us to go backwards. He may say, stand still, and, and he know that, stand still for what? Instruction. And the Bible says, be still and know that God is God. And sometimes you got to be still, but he never said go backwards. Sometimes you got to listen and see what God says so that way you can get the instruction to move forward. But he never ever say, turn around, go back, run. Even when you look at the Christian armor, all the armor is for the front, nothing for the back. He never ever tells us to run from the enemy. He always tells us to charge and go forward and defeat our enemy because the Lord is our strength. We find our strength in the Lord. Be, know the sense of scripture said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we got to put on the whole armor of God. Now, when the Lord speaks, have faith and act upon his word. And I know sometimes we find that a little difficult, you know, because we try to use our five senses trying to figure out God. You cannot figure out God with your five senses. That's why you got to use the spiritual sense, which is faith. You got to believe God, faith. And my wife always liked to use faith as an acronym, F-A-I-T-H, forward action and trust in him. Faith is always forward. It's never backwards. It's never going back. It's always moving forward. And see, the scripture tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and if you look in verses 38 39, I wanted to talk about the other verse in verse 35, but just for a sake of time, let's look at these two verses. It says, now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. In other words, anyone who had, anyone who had truly put their faith in God, they never went backward, but always moved forward. God never, ever, uh, um, uh, will, will never he never ever uh, to look at a look at someone who's going forward and say look I can't be with you, but God said I have no pleasure in them that look back and turn back unto prediction, just like the son of prediction. We're talking about Judas. Notice what he did. He betrayed Jesus. He started looking back. He thought the the, the silver was more uh, precious than Jesus Christ Himself. And look what he did. Sold them out for 30 pieces of silver. That is the ransom for a full-grown slave. He said, now listen, 30 pieces of silver. That was a lot of money. But what, we, what do we do? Do we sell out our God over some money? Or just over some things? Or even over fame? Or just for your own gratification? But listen to this. 
Notice this. Faith is always forward. When he said, now the just shall live by faith. In other words, when God speaks, that's what we got to live by. The scripture tells us in Matthew 4 and 4 and Luke 4 and 4, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. This is how we live. And so he said, but if any man draw back, just like the children of Israel, they begin to draw back, they begin to turn back, they begin to look back. He said, my soul hath no pleasure in him. Don't you know when Peter was walking on the water to go to Jesus, Peter got to a point where he wanted to turn around and go back because he saw the boisterous wind. But when God told him to come, he got off the boat, began to walk on the water to go to Jesus. But then he saw the boisterous wind and he began to fear. And then next thing you know, he began to sing. At that point, he probably began to turn around and go back and thought that the boat was more safer than going to Jesus. Because that's what he was on. And that's how he felt safe. But then when you get off the boat and begin to walk by faith, going to Jesus and not by sight, see, he allowed, he allowed one of his senses into, uh, to get involved with his faith walk. Anytime we allow our senses to get involved with our faith walk, we are surely to sink. But one of the good things that he did do, he prayed and said, Lord, save me. Even in the midst of our sinking, if we still cry out to the Lord for salvation, he still will save us. And when we cry out to the Lord for salvation, he's not going to leave us hanging. What God's going to do, he said, I will be right there to immediately uh, save you. Because the Bible says immediately Jesus reached forth his hand and he saved Peter. And you know what they did? They both walked on the water to go to the boat, and the Bible said when they got in the boat, there, the, there was a great calm. The wind stopped blowing, and the sea started, uh, stopped raging. And so, and I believe that's what happens with us. God allowed these things to happen to, uh, you know, the pressures of life to happen to, the, to develop our character and form our faith. He allowed these things to happen, so that way we can become stronger and be more like Him, walking by faith and not by sight. You cannot attach sight to faith and call it faith. You can't look at something and say, oh, now I believe. Like he told Thomas, he said, Thomas, you believe because you see me. Blessed are they that believe and have not seen. We got to learn how to continue to move forward. Now listen, going forward in faith. Faith should cause us to go forward when we hear the word of God. Faith is sending the word of God before you and believing it by acting upon it. How many times have you ever sent the word of God before you? We do that when we pray. Now, let me give you a prime example. You go on vacation. You don't wait till you get to the place and start praying. You pray before you get in the car. Or even you pray while you in the car, even before you leave out your, your yard. My wife and I, we always do that. We always pray and send the word of God before us to make our way straight and prosperous, to keep us, to protect us, that there be no accidents, incidents, or coincidences of any kind, that God would keep us and he allow us to ride there and back home according to his divine providence. How many times have you ever sent the word to your job before you got there? Man, I'm telling you, this is some good stuff right here. I will pray in the morning, God, you go before me, and God, I want to have a peaceful day. I want to have a joyful day. I want to have a calm day. I, and you deal with everybody who try to oppose me. And even if I have to deal with opposition, you, you cause my spirit to be calm. You show me how to use wisdom. You help me to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Or wrath, because the Bible said, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. How many times do you send the word before you, before you go anywhere? <coughs> Listen, when God told Peter to come, the word had went forth before Peter got off the boat. When God told Moses, why are you crying out uh, 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 to me? He said, command the children, command the children of Israel to go forth. God had already sent forth his word. The Bible said he sent forth his word to do what? To heal us and to heal them. 
The word of God got to go forth. And don't you know, when God said in the book of Genesis, the Bible said in Genesis 1 and 1, and God, and God created the heavens and the earth, and when he said, let there be light, don't you know God has sent out his word declaring the end of the thing at the very beginning, and only thing he's doing is keep, just kicking back and just watching his word work. When Jesus spoke to the fig tree, Jesus sent forth the word. No man eat fruit from thee hereafter, forever. The fig tree dried up from his roots up. Peter called it to remembrance the next day. God sent forth his word. And if you sit, watch this, faith cometh by how? Hearing, hearing is by the word of God. So what God, so what we have to do, hear the word, and when we hear the word, it builds our faith. But then when we speak the word, we can act upon our faith and just follow the word. That's all we do. The scripture tells us in John chapter 1, St. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him. Without him, there was not anything made that was made. Now watch this. Faith is always going forward. Faith is sending the word of God before you and believing it by acting upon it. You know what? This is a good practice. I'm going to send the word. I'm going on vacation. I'm gonna send the word. I'm going to I'm going uh, uh, to church. I'm gonna send the word. I got to preach. I'm gonna send the word. Oh, I got to go to work. I'm gonna send the word. Yes, Lord. I got to go see somebody. I'm gonna send the word. And did not think about it. When you send the word of God, God prepare their hearts to receive what I got to say. God, the word of God already gone forth. Remember what the scripture tells us. When God sent forth His word. It does not come back to him void, but it goes out and accomplishes that that he sent it out to do, and it will prosper in the thing that he sent it to do. I'm paraphrasing that, but you know what the scripture says. So the thing is, people of God, we got to learn how to send forth the word, because if we send forth the word, we'll never look back. You can't send forth the word and turn around and run in the other direction. You've got to learn how to send forth the word. Because watch this. If you send forth the word, you can follow the word. And the Bible says, they that are led by the Spirit of God are the real, true sons of God. Why? Because the word go forth. The word go before them. Jesus even said in John's Gospel, chapter 10, he said, I, he said, my sheep know my voice and the stranger they will not follow. He said, I go before them, and I lead them, and they follow me. See, the word was already in front of the sheep, and the only thing the sheep had to do was what? Follow the word. This is what God is telling us. This is how we go forward. Follow the word. Now, you know what? It, this came to me. I just got to go and say it. Whether, you know, if I hit you, I didn't mean to miss you. Even when it comes to our finance, God said, I want you to give. Follow the word, and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. He'll cause men to give unto your bosom. Anybody who put their faith in God, God does not ignore them. And when we send the word, and notice this, watch this. Remember the centurion. He sent his servants. Go get Jesus. Yes, Go find Jesus. Yes, Tell him I'm not worthy for him to come under my roof, but just speak the word. My servant to be healed. He didn't want Jesus to come. He said, I'm not worthy. He said, I know what authority is. I'm a man under authority. If I tell this, this one to go, he going. Why? Because I sent my word. If I tell this one to do this, and he does it. Why? Because I sent my word. He said, now Jesus, just speak the word. Don't even come under my roof. I'm not worthy, but I got enough faith to know what authority is. You, in your words, a power and authority. Because Jesus said in, in Matthew's gospel, chapter 28, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So if I need an earthly blessing, Jesus has it. If I need a spiritual blessing, Jesus has it. He has all power in heaven and in earth. So whatever I bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever I loose on earth, it shall be loose in heaven. Now watch this. And when the centurion said, speak the word. In other words, let your word go forth. My servant will be healed. Jesus said, man, I never found such great faith. No, not in Israel. Jesus. 
This is what we have to do. I'm gonna send the word before I before I go to work. I'm gonna send the word there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna let the word go and do do what he needs to do. I'm gonna let the word go and do it. I'm gonna let the word do whatever he needs to do. I'm gonna let the word go ahead and deal with the people I got to deal with. I'm going to let the word go ahead and even prepare my heart. Even if God said, listen, now watch this. Understand this. God sent people in your life for two reasons. One, some come in your life as a lesson, and some come in your life as a blessing. God might be saying, yeah, you might send the word, but I prepared your heart because I'm going to send this person to you. This person is going to be a lesson for you. In other words, now you got to deal with some issues. Now I got to take, I got to, I got to see, I got to check out your character. How are you going to handle this situation? What are you going to do? And so God allowed things like that to see, and in other words, to give us the test, to see if we're going to pass it or if we're going to fail it. And then he'll bring people in your life as a blessing. Oh, gee, he might send that person to encourage you. He might send that person even just to buy you a lunch. Or just to get you a candy bar, a bag of chips, or a drink, or something. Even a bottle of water. And then he might send that person to you just to sit down and pray with you. And pray for you. Keep you encouraged. Amen. Now that person come to you as a blessing. Then again, somebody might just slap some money in your hand. You just don't know. Might write your check. Or might say, you know what? I want to be a blessing to this man because this man or this woman has been a blessing to me. You know what we have to do? Don't get the senses involved in your faith. Let the word of God go forth. Faith is sending forth the word or sending the word of God before you and believing it and acting upon it. Faith is going forward in God's word. Jesus. You got to hear God first. Faith cometh, by, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing is by the word of God. Now, let me give you these five quick things right quickly. Number one, faith is always moving forward. It's always forward. It's never backwards. Only direction God has is forward. We walk by faith and not by sight. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Anybody who's acting in faith, walking by faith, they're always going forward. Number two, faith is action. And when we talk about action, it's something done or performed. It's an act or deed. Faith is always action. But let me, let me go on record and say this. Don't you know faith is really a noun? But the reason why it says action, because, see, when you act upon your faith, you're doing something. And, see, really believing or believe is the action to faith. Let me tell you why I said that. Because in Hebrews chapter, uh, in chapter 11, in verse 1, it says, now faith is. In that verse of scripture, it tells me that faith is a noun. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now watch this in verse 6. But without faith, faith is a noun there. It is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must what? Must believe, that's the action. Must believe that he is a, uh, that he is, in other words, that he exists, he's alive, he is who he say he is, that God is the creator of heaven and earth, he is the one who sent his only begotten son, God is, he is, he does exist, he is alive, he is not a fictitious name, nor a fairy tale, he is who he say he is. He is the great I am and the God of Abraham and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, don't just only believe in his presence, but also believe in his promises. If he say he'll do it, he'll do it. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should even have to repent or change his mind. The Bible says Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through, through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was able also to perform. So faith is action, but the action of faith is believing. Because, right, watch this, you can have faith in something, but if you don't act upon it, you just got faith but, not, but haven't done anything. 
People who believe, there's always action behind what they believe because you're going to do what you believe. You're going to do what you believe. Here's the third one. Faith is always in God. Faith is always in God. God is the object of our, of our faith and he's the object of our prayers. Uh, Mark eleven twenty two. have faith in God. Faith is always trusting. Faith is always trusting. We know Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Number five, faith must be in him. Why? Because it's still all about him. We faith is in God, but faith got to be, be in him. Jesus said, let not, let not your heart be troubled. St. John 14 and 1. If you believe in God, he said, also believe in me. We got not, not only believe in God, he said, believe in me. Because Jesus, he being the son of God, but he was also God incarnated in the flesh. Now, let me give you these three things. You must have faith in the Father. Mark eleven twenty two. 22. You must focus on your future or going forward. Exodus chapter 14, verse 14 through 15. You must forget your faults, flaws, and failures. Forget what's behind you. When you start focusing on your faults, flaws, and failures, it's going to be hard for you to move forward. Well, I did this in my past. I did that in my past. And you know, and the Bible tells us, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 14, you know what the Apostle Paul said. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and, I, and reaching forth into those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I'm pressing towards, not, not backwards. He said, I'm forgetting what's behind. You know, every time you forget what's behind, it makes it so much easier to go forward. But as long as you focus in on, on who hurt you, or who did you wrong, or the bad business deal that you had, the bad relationship you had, the bad divorce that you had, uh, the bad uh, deal that you got when you bought that lemon and you thought you was get, getting a nice, uh, uh, decent car, uh, uh, the job you were overlooked on as far as promotion, as, as long as you keep looking back, you'll never go forward. You got to know that God is in your future. And see, when you do these things, this will cause you to go further in life. See, some people have become immobile, immovable, and motionless because of focusing on the past. We all must have a focused faith in the Father to move forward. Hebrews 12 and 2, it says what? Looking unto Jesus, the often finisher of, of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God or the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I'm going to close with this. Listen to me. Because our hope is in Christ, however, we cannot let uh, uh, we can let go of our past guilt and look forward to what God will help us to become. Don't dwell on your past. Instead, grow in the knowledge of God by concentrating on your relationship with Him now. Realize that you are forgiven. And then move on to a life of faith and obedience. Look forward to a fuller and more meaningful life because of your hope in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are what? Passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Remember, you do not have a past with God. Ah, I like that. Numbers, look, if your old life is behind you, old things are passed away. You don't have a past with God. Only a future. 
Every time God looks at us, he doesn't look at us and say, man, you know, I don't know why I did this. But all that stuff you did, you were in adultery, you stole, you murdered, you did this. And, you know, think about what Paul, look at Paul's life. God was not looking at Paul's past. He was looking at his future. God was not looking at Moses' past. He was looking at his future. God is not looking at your past. He's looking at your future. The prodigal son's father. That story really about the love of the father. If you think about it. The love of the father. He was not focusing on his son's past. Spending his money. Routes his living with prostitutes and all of that. Eating with the hog. He didn't focus on, the, on his past. He was focusing on his future. Bring me a robe. Bring me a ring. Uh, uh, put, get, get some shoes. Kill the fatted calf. My son who was dead, he's alive again. He was lost and now he's found. Remember, you don't have a past with God. You might have a past with people, but you don't have a past with God. You only have a future. Remember, your past does not wipe out your future. If you believe that, this is a time and opportunity for you to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Forget about your past. Forget about who you hurt. Forget about your, all your, your flaws and your faults and your failures. Forget about everything you've done and let God be your future. I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. So you can't go back in your past and relive it. You can learn from it. But God is telling us now, you have a future with me. You don't have a past with me. You have a past with people, not a future with people. God will cause you to have a future with people when you realize you have a future with him. Now, if you want that future, you want to be saved and know that you're saved, pray this prayer. Repeat this after me. Say, so Lord Jesus, I come to you now confessing that I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And he is, he is the Son of God. Son of God. He, came, he came, he died, he died on, the on the cross for my sins. For my sins. And, on and on the third day, God, God you, raised you, Jesus you raised Jesus from the dead, from the dead for my righteousness. righteousness. Jesus, Jesus, I do now, I, do I confess you, I, I accept you, and I, and I receive you I receive as my Lord, my Master, my and my Savior. Thank you for saving me and keeping my name in the book of life. If you believe that, give God some praise and give him some glory. Now you are a new creature in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Your old life is behind you. You don't have a past with God. You only have a future. That's why it's called the past. You don't pass it. It's behind you. But you have a future with God. So go forward in him. Amen. We're getting ready to sign off. and just want to say thank you for taking this time to grow in the word of God with us once again. And those of you uh, here in the CSRA, Raymond, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in church. I want you to be there by 930 so we can get started. No, you need to come to prayer at 9 o'clock. And so we are in prayer at 9 o'clock. And come on so we can get started. And we'll be live again at 10 o'clock. We love you and appreciate you. It's time for us to give you the benediction so we can continue to move forward. And benediction comes from Jude chapter 1 and only one chapter, verse 24, 25. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And remember, it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. God bless you. We love you. Till next time.